Today's very exciting because we're making my favorite dessert in the entire world, tiramisu. I'm very particular about it, so we're making it my way today. It's gonna be creamy, light, and perfect. And we're gonna top it with beautiful crunchies that are gonna give this tiramisu texture that it often does not have. I wanna thank our sponsor today, Comatia, but more on them later. For now, let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna start off with four ingredients. I've got some really fresh pasture-raised eggs. These are really good quality eggs. You want fresh, good quality eggs from good chickens. So pasture is the type of egg you should always look for. Forget organic, forget free range, just look for pasture raised. Next up, we've got mascarpone cheese, and we just want this softened. I just left this out for maybe 30 minutes, and it'll be nice and workable. I'm probably gonna use about half of this, about eight ounces. A couple tablespoons of sugar, and then I'm gonna come in with about a half a cup of sweetened condensed milk. This isn't very traditional, but I actually like this. It adds a nice sweetness, it has a nice texture and creaminess to the tiramisu. Now I'm gonna use a stand mixer, but you can use a cheap electric hand mixer if you got one. I'm gonna separate five egg yolks and then throw those egg yolks into the mixing bowl of the stand mixer. I'll save the egg whites for breakfast or use it to dredge for fried chicken. To that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna pop that into the stand mixer with the whisk attachment, and I'm gonna beat that on high for probably about three minutes. I want the color of the eggs to become pale, and I want it to double in volume and become airy and light. Pasteurized eggs are safe to eat raw, but if you're worried about that you could temper this in a double boiler to be safe after about three to five minutes we're gonna pour in that half cup of the sweetened condensed milk which is about half of this can you can turn the machine back on high and beat that for another three to five minutes occasionally scraping the side with a spatula until it becomes thick light and airy now we've been beating this egg mixture for a total of about six to seven minutes now we can start to slowly work in the mascarpone cheese I'm gonna lower the speed to a nice slow speed and then work in the mascarpone one tablespoon at a time and we're gonna use about one cup of it. It's easy to overbeat mascarpone, so we're gonna slowly add it in one tablespoon at a time so that we make sure that it's smooth and nicely incorporated into the mix. And then once we've got a nice smooth creamy mixture in the mixing bowl, we're gonna set that off to the side. I'm gonna get a large bowl and I'm gonna add about a cup of cold cream. Now you want a big bowl and you want a big whisk. And the proper way to make whipped cream is really large strokes. So you're basically trying to run the cream around the circumference of that large bowl helps you beat a lot of air into it without making a big effort and it'll make making whipped cream a lot faster than using a smaller bowl. Once we've got it to stiff peaks, then we can add that into the rest of the mixture. So I'm gonna add a little teaspoon of vanilla extract, a pinch of salt, and then add that whipped cream directly into the bowl and then we're gonna turn the machine on very low speed. We just want to gently mix this into the mix. And once it's worked in, we want to get it out. Pour it into a bowl. It should be fluffy, creamy. It should be semi-pourable, cascading off of a spatula, and it should not be grainy. Get that into the fridge until we're ready to use it. Now, you know tiramisu means lift me up. And for this recipe, we're going to need either some coffee or espresso, but you know I don't have a machine to make it at home. That's why I want to thank our sponsor today, Comatier. Comatier is a new way to make, or should I say melt, coffee at home. They offer a pour over quality coffee from some of the world's best specialty coffee roasters, brewed 10 times stronger and delivered in frozen recyclable aluminum capsule. The brewed coffee is immediately flash frozen in these pucks to lock in freshness and flavor. It's a completely new format of coffee. All you gotta do is run that capsule under some hot water, loosen up the ice puck inside, add it to a glass with about six to eight ounces of hot water to melt the puck and you've got instant coffee that tastes like a barista just brewed it in your home. All the Brewing's already been done for you. If you like an iced coffee, you can make one as well by allowing that capsule to melt in some hot water, adding some cold filtered water along with some ice. You can really make any kind of coffee you want with any special equipment and no real cleanup and the results are still delicious. Each box comes with tasting notes so I can decide which one I wanna use for my tiramisu. The morning blend has notes of caramel, cola, and baker's chocolate, which I think is gonna go perfect in the tiramisu. So I'm just gonna take two pods and let them defrost in some warm water. We'll be able to use those in a little bit. Now I love saving you money and for a limited time, I'm getting you 25% off your first two orders when you use my code at cometeer.com. Head on down there, grab some coffee, make some tiramisu and let's get back into the recipe. Now, like I said, tiramisu means lift me up. So the idea was sort of like you're getting a little bit of a kick from this thing, both from coffee and espresso and rum or something like Kahlua, which I like to use because it's a coffee flavored rum. It's the perfect thing to use in my opinion. Now, if you don't want to use alcohol, 
alcohol, feel free to omit this and just replace it with any sort of espresso or coffee. And if you don't want the caffeine, just use decaf. Comatier has decaf pods, so you can be sure to get those. These have been defrosted. You can hear the coffee slushing inside. And then of course we've got our lady fingers, which we're gonna be dipping in a mixture of coffee and Kahlua. So I'm just gonna pour my Komatir pods into a bowl. I'm gonna fill them up four times with water and I'm gonna add that into the coffee mixture to dilute it a bit. Then I'm gonna add about a third to a half cup of the Kahlua. You want about a cup and a half to two cups of liquid should be enough for all the lady fingers to soak up. Then we just wanna get our lady fingers scattered on a platter. These are the good Italian lady fingers. One side has some sugar on it. The other is just a nice, hard, dried cookie. So now we have all of our elements. We've got our cream, we've got our lady fingers, and we've got our coffee liquor mix. Now for this recipe, it works best with an eight by eight Pyrex or something that has a little bit of thickness that'll be able to get two layers of the tiramisu. And then we just gotta throw it together, which is the fun part. So the big trick here is you don't wanna soak the lady fingers, it's more of a dip. We wanna drop them in the mixture, let one side sit for a one count, give it a flip for another one count, drain the excess off and right into the Pyrex. Again, drop it in for a one count, flip, another one count into the Pyrex, and we wanna kinda get them as snuggled as we can at each layer. These are basically going to allow the exterior to get absorbed by that coffee, but when we add the cream, the center is gonna be hydrated enough and it's gonna act more like a cake. If we over soak it, they're gonna turn to mush and you're gonna lose that beautiful texture. If whole lady fingers don't fit, you can break some up and just kind of work them into whatever crevice you can to make sure we've got a complete layer of lady fingers on the bottom. Once you've got that base layer of lady fingers, then we can go in with the cream and pour about half that cream mixture on top. Spread it edge to edge. Make sure every inch is covered in that cream. You could add a layer of cocoa powder at this stage, some people do. Otherwise, just start that same process again for another layer. And I like to orient the cookies in the same way I oriented the bottom layer and not do any sort of crisscross. I find it just makes for a better looking slice once you cut it in the end. Once you've got that second layer of lady fingers, then you're just gonna pour on the rest of that cream right on top. We're gonna put a cover on it. I like to use aluminum foil to sort of tent it just so we don't disrupt that layer of cream because it looks so beautiful and luscious right now. And I'm just gonna sort of tent it over the tiramisu and pop that in the refrigerator for at minimum six hours, but I really recommend overnight to allow the lady fingers to fully soften and hydrate. We come back a day later and the tiramisu is perfect. We're gonna take some cocoa powder. I'm gonna put it in a small little sieve and we're just gonna dust the top of that tiramisu with a generous coating of unsweetened cocoa powder and then we're ready to cut into this guy. And if everything came out perfectly, the cream should be nice and creamy. It should not be grainy. The center of the lady fingers should be hydrated and soft, almost like a cake texture, but you should see that coffee Kahlua border or around each lady finger. And then we wanna get that onto a plate. We're gonna take these baked crepes. You can get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link. They're a little expensive, but they're incredible for texture. And what happens when you break them up, you'll get what's called a fouilletine, which is a crunchy, crispy crepe topping that's used in a lot of pastries. And I think one thing that's missing in a tiramisu is texture. And to me, this is the perfect way to add it to this dish. So we're just gonna take that fouilletine or crumbled up baked crepe and sprinkle a generous amount right on top of the tiramisu. And we can take a fork and we can test it's going to cut right through softly, no resistance. Everything's going to stay together. And it is, in my opinion, the greatest dessert in the entire world. This is it right here. This is the one. The crunch, the creamy, the lady fingers still maintain like a little bit of texture. They don't become like a complete mush. They become more like a cake. And that's from not over soaking them. This has to be tried. Recipe is gonna be down in the description. Now you got a killer tiramisu in the arsenal and it's been a long time coming. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. If you need another comfort classic, I just posted the three cheese grilled cheese with tomato soup that launched my food career. It's a must see if you follow the channel. So a link's gonna be on the screen right now along with a few others if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks for watching.